Hello, my name is Kathy Murphy Bushcutter. I'm a family nurse practitioner in South Central Nebraska and a student in the Doctor of Nursing Practice program at the University of South Alabama. The title of my quality improvement project is Implementation of a Comprehensive Diabetic Foot Exam Protocol in Rural Primary Care. For the past 25 years, I have worked as a family nurse practitioner serving the rural residents of Franklin and Webster counties in South Central Nebraska. I would like to begin with defining the concept of rural. The U.S. Department of Agriculture defines rural as an areas of open country and settlements with fewer than 2,500 residents. The number of people living in rural areas is only 16% of the U.S. population. However, they reside on 75% of the total land mass. Nebraska is considered a rural state with over 35% of the population residing in areas with less than 2,500 residents. According to the Census Bureau, Franklin County covers about 574 square miles and has a population average of 5.6 person per square mile. And Webster County covers 577 square miles and has a population average of 6.6 .6 person per square mile. Rural residents experience significant health care disparities related to population risk for poor health, limited access to health care providers, and reduced life expectancy. Vulnerability of rural populations is accentuated by isolated geographic locations, low socioeconomic status, combined with higher number of unhealthy habits fewer community resources, and limited employment opportunities. There is also a high rate of obesity in the rural population that contributes to increased incidence of chronic diseases such as diabetes. Diabetic foot ulcers are the leading cause of non-traumatic lower extremity amputations in the United States. Diabetic peripheral neuropathy and peripheral artery disease are directly related to the development of ulceration of the foot and lower extremity. Patients with type 2 diabetes that develop neuropathy have up to a 20% lifetime risk of developing a foot ulcer and the risk increases to 30 to 35% when combined with peripheral artery disease and foot deformity. Through preventive screenings in patients diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, assessments for signs of neuropathy and peripheral artery disease help identify patients with loss of protective sensation and impaired perfusion that are at risk for developing long-term complications of the foot and lower limb. Comprehensive foot care that includes screening exams and risk assessments for patients with type 2 diabetes reduces the number of these long-term complications. National statistics from the American Diabetes Association and the Center for Disease Control estimate that over 30 million people in the United States have diabetes. However, only 23.1 million, that's 7.2 percent of our population, have a diabetes diagnosis. The remaining 7 million are undiagnosed or unaware of their disease. The prevalence of diabetes is higher in minority populations of American Indians, Alaska Natives, non-Hispanic Blacks, and people of Hispanic ethnicity. However, the percentage of adults of all races with diabetes increases with age, reaching 25.2% in those age 65 and older. Geographical patterns indicate the highest incidence of diabetes in the Southern and Appalachian regions, followed by the Mid and Southwestern states. According to the CDC, the incidence of diagnosed diabetes in Nebraska is 11.6%, well above the national average of 7.2%. In the counties where I practice, the rates are similar, Franklin County 10.8% and Webster County 11.1%. Overall, rural residents experience a 17% higher rate of type 2 diabetes compared to their urban counterparts. Identifying the problem. In rural health clinics located in Franklin and Webster counties of South Central Nebraska, the management and treatment of patients with type 2 diabetes by primary care providers showed significant variability and lack of adherence to well-established evidence-based practice screening guidelines. Specifically, primary care providers were inconsistently performing and documenting annual foot exams for adult patients with type 2 diabetes. In the rural health clinics, the compliance rate for diabetic foot exams in 2017 was 42%, significantly well below the national and Nebraska rate of 68%. Although evidence demonstrates the effectiveness of comprehensive foot exams in reduction and prevention of foot ulcers, 
primary care providers identified barriers to annual comprehensive foot exams, similar to those found in the literature, including lack of adequate knowledge and time constraints. But I also found questionable attitudes and opinions towards evidence-based practice guidelines. The purpose of this quality improvement project was to increase the number of annual comprehensive foot exams and risk assessments completed in adults aged 19 years and older with a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes in rural primary care. The overarching aim of the project was that 75% of adults with type 2 diabetes presenting for primary care in four rural health clinics would consistently experience a comprehensive foot exam and risk assessment. Three objectives that supported the overarching aim. First, 100% of the nurse practitioners, physicians, and rural health clinic nursing staff would complete an educational comprehensive diabetic foot examination and risk assessment training session prior to implementation of the project. Second, increased to 75% electronic medical record documentation of comprehensive foot exams for adult patients with type 2 diabetes. And third, risk assessments performed and documented in 50% of adult patients with type 2 diabetes within 15 weeks of the proposed projection or project initiation. The participants in the project are the primary care providers in four rural health clinics in Franklin and Webster counties in South Central Nebraska. The primary care providers include one full-time family practice physician, four full-time family nurse practitioners, and one part-time family nurse practitioner. The family practice physician is a medical doctor with over 30 years of experience. The five nurse practitioners are masters prepared and vary in advanced practice experience from six months to 23 years. The population focus is rural adults aged 19 years and older with a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. These are the hardworking men and women that use their hands and their feet to make a living. The setting is the Franklin County Memorial Hospital. It is a critical access hospital in Franklin, Nebraska with three provider-based rural health clinics located in Franklin County and one independent rural health clinic in neighboring Webster County. The healthcare system serves uh, residents in both counties and surrounding areas, including people from North Central Kansas. While some patients travel between 40 to 60 miles to receive care, most patients have access to primary care within a 15 minute drive from their home. The quality improvement project was co conducted in the four rural health clinics. The tool used in the quality improvement project was the Michigan Neuropathy Screening Instrument. It is a valid measure of distal peripheral neuropathy in patients with type 2 diabetes. The screening includes a two-step process. First is the assessment of neuropathy symptoms from the patient through a 15-item questionnaire. Second, a physical examination of the patients to evaluate appearance and sensation of the feet using a monofilament, tuning fork, and reflex hammer by the primary care providers. The Plan, Do, Study, Act quality improvement model was used in this quality improvement study. The PDSA blue, uh, provided a blueprint for designing, implementing, measuring, and distributing a quality improvement study. The purpose of the PDSA is to facilitate relationships between the process changes in the healthcare system and improvements of outcomes. In this quality improvement project, the plan phase included defining the problem, reviewing literature, identifying the stakeholders, defining uh, evaluation measurements and review with the primary care providers, nursing staff and administration uh, as those were the stakeholders. Under the do portion, the diabetic foot exam protocol was created based on evidence-based practice screening guidelines. There was a template created in the electronic medical record and the educational session for the primary care providers and nursing staff was developed. Under the study phase, the protocol and template were uh, reviewed with the primary care providers, nursing staff and administration and revisions were made. Under the ACT phase, revision was made to the protocol. 
the educational sessions were provided and a trial implementation of the pro protocol was uh, completed in one rural health clinic. During the second cycle uh, the, in the plan phase, uh, we reviewed the trial implementation data and under the due phase, uh, we implemented system-wide and then collected the data. Under the study phase, we analyzed the data and evaluated the process and outcome measures. And finally, uh, we were to either adapt, adopt, or abandon the quality improvement project. I'm happy to report that uh, the st uh, stakeholders, as well as the quality improvement committee, agreed that this was a very worthwhile project and they were very happy with the results and would like to continue it uh, system wide. In this slide, you will see an example of the questionnaire that we asked patients to complete. The nursing staff took the completed information and entered the data into the electronic medical records. The other two pictures are pictures of my nurse practitioner colleague demonstrating parts of the comprehensive foot exam. This slide shows a sample of the comprehensive diabetic foot exam protocol that was built into the electronic medical record, which is uh, called Centrique. The picture on the left is the form for documenting the exam. There are drop down boxes that allow for easy completion. The form on the right is the risk assessment that allows the provider to define the patient risk uh, assessment in uh, one of four categories, and then education and follow up recommendations were provided with a comment box for additional information to be added by each provider. Data was collected and analyzed using the SPSS software. Baseline process data from 2017 was collected uh, from the retrospective chart reviews uh, of the 2017 data at the beginning of the project. At the end of the 15-week project, data collection was completed and entered into SPSS and this allowed the outcome measures to be evaluated. Results from the quality improvement project showed retrospective data was a convenient sample from 2017. There were 60 adult patients that were randomly selected that had type 2 diabetes. They were identified by uh, their ICD-10 codes E11 to E11.9 indicating a diagnosis of uh, type 2 diabetes. Demographic data was collected ensuring that all patients selected were 19 years and older with a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Including, uh, included in the 60 patients, 35% were female ranging from age 52 to 92 and 65% uh, were male ranging from age 38 to 85 years of age. Post-intervention data that was uh, collected in 2018, 15 weeks after the project was in implemented, 80 adult patients aged 19 years and older with type 2 diabetes presented for primary care. The demographic data revealed 52% were female, ranging in age from 26 to 89 years of age, and 48% were male, ranging in age from age 47 to 84. To clarify the results, comparison is made pre and post intervention. So this slide shows rural health clinic percentage of foot exam uh, completion. When you uh, look at the rural health clinics overall, there was a, an improvement from 42% to 63%, meaning that was a 21% percentage point improvement. Individual clinics, pool medical clinic increased from 40 to 43%. Hildreth Clinic had a 46 uh, percentage point improvement from 29 to 75. Campbell Clinic did not have uh, any patients um, present pre or post that were that fit the criteria. Main Street Clinic improved 36 percentage points from 52 to 88. To further break down the data, the provider percentage of foot exam completion. Uh, the medical doctor's uh, percentage point improvement was uh, five points from 35 to 40. Nurse practitioner one improved 32 points from 56 to 88. 
Nurse Practitioner 2 increased by 42 percentage points from 29 to 71. Nurse Practitioner 3 uh, improved from 20 to 60, and that's 40 percentage point improvement. NP4 did not um, participate because she resigned from the practice prior to the completion of the quality improvement project. NP5 showed a uh, one percentage point improvement from 34 or from 33 to 34. Outcome measure results. The goal to increase the primary care provider and office nursing staff knowledge of evidence-based guideline recommendations for the comprehensive foot exam in patients with type 2 diabetes was met with 100% participation. The goal to increase to 75% electronic medical record documentation of the comprehensive foot exam for adult patients with type 2 diabetes uh, was not met. However, uh, it was felt that the 21 percentage point increase was um, very satisfactory. Third, risk assessments were performed and documented in 63 percent of the um, adult patients with type 2 diabetes and this surpassed the 50 percent goal. Overall, the quality improvement project showed significant improvement Three of four rural health clinics increased their percentage of completed exams, and five of six primary care providers increased the percentage of completed exams. The Quality Improvement Project was an effective use of the PDSA Quality Improvement Model to implement evidence-based screening guidelines in the rural primary care. There were some limitations. The quality improvement project had several limitations, including the convenient sample, small sample size, and in the retrospective data collection, it was uh, reviewed by dictated notes in the electronic medical record, and that was subject to individual interpretation. The administration of the rural health clinics was very supportive of the QI project, and that strong support may have overly influenced the change process. In conclusion, chronic health conditions such as type 2 diabetes provide complex management challenges for rural primary care providers. Improving provider adherence to screening guideline recommendations is essential to improving care. Implementation of the comprehensive diabetic foot exam protocol improved provider, rural provider adherence to recommended screening guidelines for annual foot exam. Clinical recommendations. Through the quality improvement initiatives in rural primary care, clinically relevant tools such as the uh, comprehensive diabetic foot exam protocol incorporated into the existing electronic medical record significantly improved the primary care provider adherence to evidence-based screening guidelines for annual foot exam, enhancing patient care and improving patient outcomes. Quality improvement initiatives are key to implementing evidence-based guidelines into clinical practice, and successful implementation of, an, of the evidence-based guidelines into clinical practice was accomplished through the use of a PDSA model with input and participation from stakeholders. I would be remiss if I did not say a huge thank you to Dr. Warseal Powell, my um, academic advisor, Dr. Linda Mazur, my clinical preceptor, the primary care providers, administration and staff of the Franklin County Memorial Hospital and rural health clinics, Savannah Murphy, director of nursing informatics. She was uh, a valuable resource in collecting the data. And of course, my family and colleagues, and also you, the students that have uh, been to get uh, that we've been together in this journey. I have included pictures of each rural health clinic. I thought you might like to see uh, where the quality improvement project took place. Thank you very much and there are references listed at the end of this uh, slide. Sorry.